Hi, welcome to the fifth review session. Well, this um, review session is on the topics capital and revenue uh, receipts and expenditure and contingent assets and liabilities. So before I start uh, reviewing the questions, I'll give you a brief about uh, these topics. We'll start with, um, I'll give you an introduction on the topic um, capital and uh, revenue expenditure and uh, why it is important to distinguish between capital expenditure and uh, revenue expenditure. Right. See, expenditure can be classified broadly into two types, classic uh, capital expenditure and uh, revenue expenditure. Okay. Uh, capital expenditure is the expenditure that is incurred in order to purchase fixed assets. Not just purchase fixed assets, suppose uh, any expenditure is incurred on an existing fixed asset which is going to improve its efficiency, that expenditure is also capital expenditure. What is the accounting treatment for this capital expenditure? Such an expenditure will appear in the balance sheet as an asset. Revenue expenditure is an expenditure that is incurred with respect to the day-to-day -day operating activities or an expenditure which is incurred on an asset in order to maintain the earning capacity of an asset. For example, repairs, example salaries, rent, whitewashing of a building. So all these are expenses which are incurred in order to either run the day-to-day -day operations or expenses that are incurred in order to maintain the existing earning capacity of an asset. Such expenses are called revenue expenses and they find their place in the profit and loss account. It's important to distinguish between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure because if we treat a revenue expenditure as a capital expenditure, we will be understating the profits and we will be overstating the asset position. For example, if repairs is debited to machinery account, then the profit is going to be overstated and the um, asset position is also going to be overstated. Okay, And uh, similarly, if we treat um, a capital expenditure as a revenue expenditure, then the profit is going to be understated and the asset position is also going to be understated. For example, if machinery purchased is being is going to be debited to a repairs account or some other nominal account, then in that case profit will be understated and uh, the asset position is also going to be understated. So that is why it is important to distinguish between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. So when an asset is purchased or when a significant improvement is made to an asset, so uh, we place that expenditure in the balance sheet and uh, we depreciate the asset. Depreciation is a revenue expenditure. So basically we are, distri we are distributing the cost of the asset uh, over the useful life of the asset. So um, with, that, with that introduction uh, we will get into the uh, uh, various questions. The first question is insurance and freight on machinery purchased is what expenditure? So uh, we have to keep in mind that um, capital expenditure does not mean just the purchase cost of machinery. All the expenses that are incurred in order to bring the machinery to its intended place and use. So that all expenditure that is incurred in order to make the machinery available for use is called capital expenditure. So insurance and freight on machinery purchased is capital expenditure. So for example, if the machinery cost, the basic cost of the machinery is say 1 lakh rupees and the expense incurred on insurance and freight is say 30,000 rupees, then the cost of the machinery that is to appear in the balance sheet is lakh and 30,000 rupees. The accounting entry that we will pass will be machinery account debit to cash. We will not be debiting insurance account or freight account because we are not treating it as a revenue expenditure. We are treating it as part of the cost of the machinery and hence we will be debiting machinery account and as I told you in this example, lakh and 30,000 will be subject to depreciation year after year. So the answer to the first question is A, capital expenditure. Customs duty on imported machinery. Right, so when we import machinery, 
we have to pay the customs duty in order to clear it from the airport so unless we pay the customs duty we are not we will not be able to bring the machinery to its we cannot we cannot make it available for our intended use and hence customs duty is uh, capital expenditure so it has to be added to the cost of the machinery so answer is a expenses incurred on trial run uh these expenses are uh, capital expenditure this will be added along with the cost of the uh, machinery so answer is a next cost of a second hand machinery purchased so uh, this is a uh, this is quite um, a straightforward question so it doesn't matter whether the machinery is a first hand machinery or a second hand machinery or a third hand machinery it is uh, it is an asset to the person who is purchasing it so it is a it is a capital expenditure for him so the basic cost of purchasing a second hand machinery is capital expenditure so uh, when he purchases a second hand machinery the entry that he will pass is machinery account debit to cash and uh, it is going to be capitalized as an asset next question number 5 money is spent to reduce working expenses okay so as i told you earlier capital expenditure does not mean uh, um, only purchase of uh, a fixed asset okay so suppose some um, money is expended on the asset so as to improve its earning capacity or earning capacity uh, can improve or its efficiency can improve so that the expenses that is to be incurred on it reduces so uh, either which ways the company or the business is going to benefit by on a longer term uh, by the uh, money that has been spent on the machinery so the money that a business spends in order to reduce working expenses is capital expenditure overhauling expenses for the engine of a motor car to get better fuel efficiency right see uh, for example let us take um, the example of a car which gives us uh, a mileage of say about 11 kilometers per liter right and so you uh, incur certain expenses um in order to uh, either replace the engine or you make some serious modifications to the engine so that the car starts giving you say 13 kilometers per liter or about or 14 kilometers per liter which is going to benefit you in terms of lower petrol cost right so such expenses that you incur in order to get better fuel efficiency so there is enduring benefit that is arising out of this expenditure and it is enhancing its uh, performance it's enhancing its efficiency which is going to lead to better um, or rather you know um, it is going to benefit the um, entity in future such expenses are uh, capital expenditure and so this is to be treated as a capital expenditure legal expenses to acquire an asset uh, for example um, when we purchase land so Um, uh, we need to get the title cleared and we might need to get the services of a lawyer so such expenses that are incurred in order to acquire an asset uh, are capital expenditure and it is to be added to the cost of the asset amount spent for the construction of temporary huts for storing building material while constructing a building is okay so uh, i think this is a common site uh, we find small uh, uh, huts or uh, small um, small temporary constructions outside um, the construction site where either the workers live or uh, they to sto- they store their building material so this construction of temporary huts is absolutely essential for the construction of the building right and uh, hence the amount that is spent for construction of these temporary huts is a uh, capital expenditure and it will be added to the cost of the building okay suppose we are constructing a building for about a crore then whatever we spent on constructing these temporary huts will be added to the cost of that building right and it will be depreciated um, accordingly right amount spent on demolition of building to construct a bigger building on the same site right see unless we demolish an existing building it is not possible to uh, construct a new building 
okay so the amount that is spent on demolishing the existing building in order to clear the place level the ground all the expenditure that is incurred on that is capital expenditure it is going to get added to the cost of the new building that is going to come up so such expenditure is necessary in order to make the new asset come into existence okay so uh, such expenditure is capital expenditure purchase of goodwill yeah see uh, capital expenditure need not be purchase of tangible assets only it can be purchase of intangible assets like brands trademarks licenses goodwill so all this is capital expenditure so whether it is tangible fixed assets or intangible fixed assets the uh, money that is spent on acquiring um, an asset which is a capital in nature is capital expenditure so purchase of goodwill is capital expenditure purchase of technical know how yes purchase of technical know how is an intangible fixed asset and so um, it is also capital expenditure right now we have a problem to work out second hand machine was purchased for rupees 1 lakh through a broker who charged 1% it was brought to factory after incurring transportation cost of rupees 2000 and then it was repaired at a cost of rupees 3000 and then installed at a cost of rupees 4000 and uh, rupees 5000 was spent on uh, trial run production the commercial production began and continued up to 11 months at the end of which the machine was repaired at a cost of rupees 6000 what is the amount that is to be debited to machinery account right so we are given various expenses that uh, the business has incurred in relation to the purchase of the second hand machine and we are required to find out what is the amount that is to be capitalized that is what is the amount that is to be treated as a capital expenditure or what is the amount that is to be debited to the machinery account okay so uh, the basic purchase cost of the second hand machine is rupees 1 lakh right so definitely that is uh, that is to be capitalized secondly it says that a broker charged 1% okay so uh, the commission that you incur in order to acquire the asset is part of cost of the asset okay so it's not just the basic cost as i told you but all incidental expenses that are incurred in order to acquire the asset and to bring the asset to its um intended uh, in order to its place of intended use in, in order to make it available for the intended use are all to be added along with the cost of the asset so the basic purchase price is rupees 1 lakh the broker charged 1% so broker commission is 1% of 1 lakh which is 1000 right the next expenditure is it was brought to factory after incurring transportation cost of 2000 so the expenditure that is incurred in order to bring the machinery to the place where it is to be used is to be added to the cost of the machinery so we will add 2000 to 1 lakh 1000 right so 1 lakh is the basic cost 1000 is a brokerage so now it becomes 1 lakh 1000 to which we add 2000 which is the transportation cost so now the cost becomes 1 lakh 3000 and then see we must keep in mind that this is a second hand machine right so in order to make it available for use we have to incur some repairs so such repairs which are necessary in order to make the machine available for use is capital expenditure okay so uh, this 3000 rupees that has been incurred in order to repair the machinery will get added to this 1 lakh 3000 that we arrived at so far so now we have arrived at the cost as 1 lakh 6000 rupees then installation charges was 4000 installation charges is also to be added as part of the cost of machinery so it becomes lakh and 10000 and uh, as we saw earlier the expenses that are incurred on a trial run production are also to be included with the with the cost of the asset so now the uh, cost of the asset or the amount that is to be debited to the machinery account is 5000 rupees so i'll just work it out for you 
okay so the basic cost of the asset is 1 lakh okay on which brokerage is 1000 then we are incurring transportation charges to bring the asset to the premises that is also to be added to the cost of the asset after which some repair costs are incurred which is 3000 and trial run expenses on trial run is 4000 okay so lakh and 15000 rupees right no sorry there is one more uh, 5000 that is incurred i let me just take a look at that uh, okay installation cost is 4000 rupees i forgot the installation cost so let's add um, so this is lakh and 10 sorry trial run is 5000 we'll just change it to 5 so this becomes uh, lakh and uh, 16 lakh and 11000 plus some 4000 rupees on installation so it becomes lakh and 15000 rupees so the total cost of the machinery is lakh and 15000 rupees all right so let's look at problem number 13 a second hand car is purchased for rupees 20000 amount of 3000 is spent on its repairs rupees 1000 is incurred to get the car registered in owner's name and 2000 is paid as dealer's commission okay so what is the amount that is to be debited to car account so uh, all the, all the expenses that have been incurred are to be included in the uh, cost of the car so the basic cost is 20000 3000 is spent on its repairs as i told you it's a second hand car so unless you spend some money on its repairs you're not be, you're, you'll not be able to use put it to its intended use and so 23000 it becomes and uh, you have to uh, the money that is spent in order to get the car registered in the owner's name is to be added to the cost so now it becomes 24000 and uh, dealer commission is an incidental expense which we have to incur in order to acquire the asset right so the amount that is to be debited to the car account is 26000 okay so cost of rupees 1000 incurred on dismantling a machine that's worn out is revenue expenditure okay so the machine is worn out it is just going to be scrapped and so uh, the money that you spend on dismantling a machine that's completely worn out is uh, uh, revenue expenditure next annual maintenance fee of a machine okay so annual maintenance is that whenever we buy any uh, asset an annual maintenance contract comes along with the asset which we can um, um, accept or we need not get into an annual maintenance contract but uh, the purpose of this annual maintenance contract is that the uh, the machine will be repaired regularly the machine or the asset will be repaired regularly so that it works without any hassles and its present earning capacity is maintained okay so uh, since it is um, uh, an expenditure which is incurred in order to maintain the existing running condition of the asset it is a revenue expenditure legal expenses incurred to defend a suit claiming that firm's factory site belongs to the plaintiff okay so uh, legal expenses that are incurred to defend a suit that is you own a land or you own a particular you know you own a factory site somebody sells uh, somebody tells that the factory site actually belongs to them and not to the plaintiff then uh, you engage a lawyer and you incur certain expenses for the lawyer and uh, the expenses that you incur to defend uh, your title to the factory site is revenue expenditure annual uh, renewal fee of a license for next year okay so here is um, a case where you are paying the renewal fee for the next year the current year itself 
so it is a prepaid expenditure it is a revenue expenditure but it is prepaid right so it will be prepaid expenses as we know will appear as a current asset in our balance sheet so annual renewal fee of license for next year is prepaid expenditure fines imposed is revenue expenditure so it is it cannot qualify as a capital expenditure because it is not increasing the earning capacity of an asset nor is it related to purchase of a fixed asset so um fines imposed is revenue expenditure okay um free gift to customers free gift to customers uh, i think we can just ignore the rest of the uh, question um free gift to customers yeah it's some kind of um, an advertisement expenditure and hence it is revenue legal expenses to recover dues from customer right so suppose your debtors don't uh, pay you on time and you have to uh, take the legal recourse to collect the dues from the debtors such expenses is uh, revenue expenditure right annual fire insurance of building of rupees 12000 paid on 1st jan 2006 during accounting year ending on 31st march 2006 okay so here you've paid your insurance premium on 1st january 2006 the contract will run from 1st january 2006 to 31st january 2000 to 31st december 2006 but your accounting year is ending on 31 3 to so the expenditure that pertains to the year 31 3 2006 is for 3 months that is jan feb and march and uh, of this 12000 the expenditure that pertains for 3 months is rupees 3000 and the remaining 9000 will be shown as a prepaid expenditure in the balance sheet as at 31st march 2006 so the answer to this question is b festival advance to employees okay so festival advance to employees is uh, some kind of a loan that is given by the business to its employees just before a festival so that they can spend uh, for the festival and uh, such advances it's uh, strictly not an expenditure because it will be recovered later from their salaries and hence it is classified as loans and advances in the balance sheet advance to suppliers of goods this is where even before you purchase goods from the suppliers you pay the supplier in advance so this is not an expenditure it is a it's some kind of an advance it's some kind of a loans and advances it will be classified as loans and advances in the balance sheet on the asset side obviously so the answer is d right capital introduced is okay so capital introduced is a, a capital receipt right because it is relating it does not relate to the um, it's not an operating activity it is a financing activity of the business because uh, capital is brought into the business in order to finance the purchase of various assets of the business so capital introduced is a capital receipt similarly loans is a source of finance it is not an operating activity and hence loans raised is capital receipt subsidy received from government for plot of land okay so uh, buying a plot of land is capital expenditure so the subsidy that you get from the government in order to make a capital expenditure is a capital receipt but if the business is receiving a subsidy for um, it's as in the in the form of a general grant okay let us say in order to meet its day to day expenses then that subsidy will be a revenue receipt but this is a capital receipt premium received on issue of shares yes issue of shares is um, a capital receipt and so a premium um, received on issue of shares is also a capital receipt revenue from sale of products on credit ordinarily is reported as part of earnings in the 
in the period in which okay right so here we are talking about revenue recognition when do we recognize revenue from sale of products okay so the revenue is recognized in the period in which the sale is made and not in the period in which the cash is collected right so when we make a credit sale we record for it immediately we do not wait until the time we get the money from the debtors to show it as a revenue so um answer is a when the sale is made cash received from debtors is a revenue receipt because it is part of the normal operating activities of the business you make a sale that is the operating activity and when a sale is made on a credit on credit we get money against the sale from our debtors um, eventually and so such money that is received from debtors is revenue receipt bills receivable collected this is also revenue receipt because a bills receivable is um or a bill is accepted by a credit by a debtor um when a sale as a credit sale is made and so um on the maturity date when the debtor honors the bill it is a revenue receipt insurance claim for stock damaged by fire is a revenue receipt because stock relates to the operating activities of the business and so the insurance claim that uh, is received for stock damaged by fire is a revenue receipt bad debts recovered bad debts is again related to debtors debtors which we think are irrecoverable will be written off and uh, but in case we recover some money against the debts that were earlier written off so since collection from debtors is revenue receipt similarly bad debts the debts that were written off as bad but you are able to recover something from them now is also a revenue receipt loss on sale of machine is a revenue loss it is um, uh, it's not a capital loss so a loss on sale of machine is uh, a revenue loss answer is b right okay so um now we come to the next topic this is with respect to provisions contingent assets and contingent liabilities so question number 34 it says in the financial statements provision is recognized not recognized adjusted none of these okay so in the financial statements provision is recognized provision for depreciation provision for bad debts um okay so provision for warranties so these are provisions a provision is generally a liability which is of an uncertain timing and amount okay so a uh, based on certain estimates provisions are made and uh, if we are not able to make a reliable estimate of the provision it is advisable not to recognize the provision in the books but only to make a disclosure of it okay so in the financial statements provision is recognized and in fact a detailed note about this provision is supplied in the notes to the accounts next if a reliable estimate of probable outflow of resources to settle a present obligation cannot be made okay see uh, for example let us say that there is uh, uh, a suit against a company somebody has filed a suit against the company and uh, it is the proceedings are happening in the court of law but it is uncertain okay it is uncertain as to who will win the case okay so even if it looks like it seems likely that the company is uh, is is likely to lose the case but we are not able to make a reliable estimate of the damages that the company will have to make good in case there is um, in case the other person wins the case then such an obligation is a contingent liability so a contingent liability will not be recognized in the balance sheet so this is a liability which is contingent upon the happening or non happening of certain uncertain future events which are not wholly within the control of the enterprise okay so um contingent liability will only be disclosed in the balance sheet examples are like arrears of preference dividend um right so uh, calls that have not yet been made 
okay and similarly um, in case of a suit where the decision is pending or where you are not able to make a reasonable estimate of the damage that you are likely to pay in case you lose the case so such are examples of contingent liabilities and they are only supposed to be disclosed because you are not able to though there is a present obligation if you are not able to make a reliable estimate of how much is going to be the probable outflow of resources you cannot show it as a liability okay because the definition of a liability is different okay a liability is a present obligation the settlement of which is likely to result a settlement of which requires outflow of future economic benefits or outflow of economic resources so here there is a present obligation but you are not able to make a reliable estimate of how much you will have to spend in future in order to settle that obligation such a liability is a contingent liability okay next in the case of dash either outflow of resources to settle the obligation is not probable or the amount expected to be paid to settle the liability cannot be measured with sufficient reliability okay so this is the definition of a contingent liability okay so suppose there is a situation where you know that the the chance of your spending in order to settle the obligation is not probable probable means the chance is less than 50% okay then in that case you don't have to show it as a liability it is becomes a contingent liability the other cases where there is a present obligation but you are not able to measure the amount that you will have to pay in future in order to settle that present obligation okay so that again is a contingent liability so answer is c question number 37 if a reliable estimate of probable outflow of resources to settle a possible obligation cannot be made okay so it is see this is where a reliable estimate of probable outflow of resources to settle a possible obligation cannot be made it is to be disclosed as a contingent liability yeah we come to the last question if an inflow of economic benefits is probable okay then a contingent asset is disclosed where okay so a contingent asset is uh, where you expect certain inflow of economic benefits but that is dependent upon the happening or non happening of an uncertain future event not wholly within the control of the enterprise now what does this mean see for example suppose uh, let us take that uh, the company has filed a suit against another uh, entity and the company is very confident of winning the case but the suit is still pending in the court of law so we don't know uh, what is going to be the decision though the company feels that the that it is going to win the case this receipt of damages upon winning the case is contingent upon the decision that the court of law is going to give so such an asset is not cannot be recorded in the books as a receivable because of the concept of prudence or con or the concept of conservatism and this cannot be disclosed in the financial statements this will be disclosed in the report of the approving authority for example in case of companies the board of directors is the approving authority and the annual report contains a section called the directors report and that directors report will contain information about this contingent asset so answer is p yeah so with this we conclude um today's review session so in case you have doubts you please feel free to get in touch with me through email you can mail your queries at queries@graymatteracademics.com so until next time goodbye